We're talking today to Lewis Levy. Can I say that correctly? Yeah, some people say Levy, some people say Levi, some people say Levy. Some people just call me Uncle Louis. I call you Uncle Louis. I'm good with that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about retirement. I love that. And you're working on a book about retirement and how people should deal with it. That is correct. Retirement is a career. There's no question about it. And I'd say that's and it's not for everyone. Uh, if, if you don't have something going for you after you retire, you could be dead in six months. I've seen this happen to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you don't want that. So what I did, I, I, I graduated from the Department of, of Housing. And I was there to help set up nonprofit counseling agencies all over the country to counsel low and moderate income folks. And we helped a lot of people. But then I said, well, you know, there's other things out there. So what I did was, I had already done some shows, acting. And they, they liked my style. Okay. You know, and uh, I was in the Hexagon shows, which you've seen. I've never remembered Political that. satire. Very much, yeah. And uh, an agent saw me in the Hexagon shows and said, Louis, I want you to go up to Baltimore and audition for a show that's going to be on Broadway called Bernie's Bar Mitzvah. It's like Tony and Tina's wedding. You come right. in and you're at, the, this. Yep. at the affair. I said, fine. Well, they liked me. And we opened up in Baltimore and went all the way to New York. Now, ev not everybody can get back into a start a career in theater, performing, right. singing. But it seems to me, over the years, especially in the times we live now, where retirement sometimes isn't even an option anymore, right. that people have different attitudes about retirement. Right. Uh, I think I just told you that my stepfather worked all his life in the U.S. steel mill, and that he and mom and went to Sun City, and he loved it. She was sure. miserable because she didn't have anything to do. Sure, I understand. And this is, you know, we have Leisure World out here and all kinds of places like that. Or people find something like what you're doing, a second career, a third career, mm -hmm. new, or they think they must pursue hobbies they don't really give a darn about. Well, Sometimes. You uh, know, people fool themselves. But you have to take a risk. And if you don't take a risk, you know, nothing venture, nothing good. Now, some people can't do that. Um, I said, well, let's, let's do other things. So I do voiceovers. I'm, I'm in the Handy Dandy from sag Astra, which uh, is, is like an audition thing. And they look at things like that. I've done um, a, lot of, a lot of movies. I've been in a lot of movies. And I've done a lot of theater. And also now I'm, I'm into something else called cabaret. I know a lot of cabaret. Yeah, and we, we sing a lot at the uh, Morrison House. In Old Town, right. with Bob Smith, please come over. We're going to be there Saturday night, right. and uh, you won't be bored. What would you say to people? Uh, we'd also like to know what is SAG after. Screen Actors for Guild. who want to get into right, Screen this Actors kind of thing. Guild, American Federation of Radio and Television Artists. Okay. And they do a lot of uh, helping you promote you, so you don't. In Washington, you usually don't have an agent like you do in New York and Los Angeles. So what you do is, you, you join, you have to be, you know, have a certain level of talent. It costs over, and then they, they with a the handy dandy, which is a, a book of, of, uh, of voiceover folks, and that promotes you. And, and every, everybody gets, gets the book, and I've been fortunate enough to be in it from uh, way back and, until now, that in fact I'm in it again this year. So, and and it, you have excerpts of different things. I was lucky enough to win what they call a peer award for a PSA, Public Service Announcement, which had to do with motorcycle safety. You want me to give you an excerpt? Okay, I'll do it. Okay, I'll <laughs> use your imagination. Okay. A compact car and a, and a, and a truck are talking. And the compact car kind of talks like this, and Mr. Truck kind of talks like this. <laughs> so they're talking, you know, hey, what's happening, compact? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you something. And then all of a sudden, zoom. What was that? That's the motorcycle people. we got to watch out for them. And we carry this on and on and on. And i got a fear award for that. Right. And so, uh, you know, you, you never know. And many voices. So. Yeah, you got to have many. <laughs> you you got to be multi-talented. Or, or think you are, and work on it. Or and, you, you've yeah, got to be a renaissance person. Right, and you, you go to some acting schools and, and singing schools and stuff like that. Okay, uh, sure. how about a quick few words of advice to people who have retirement coming on then and they haven't given it a lot?
lot of thought and all of a sudden they're a little bit afraid. What's the first few tips you would give them? Well, I would say talk to some people that have retired in your own uh, bailiwick. Like some of the steel mill people. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there's no more steel mills. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, or, or industrial types. Right. And you talk to them and say, hey, what, what, did you, you should have set up like six months to a year before you retire, have a game plan. Did you do that? Uh, I've never thought about it. <laughs> I never thought about it, but, 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 but. No, I'll talk to the wife. But you don't even have a wife. Well, well you're right. <laughs> I'll talk to somebody else's wife. You know. <laughs> so on and on and on. And, and I said, hey, um, so that, that's, or talk to other people. You know, have an idea what you want to do. You just want to go out and fish and say, watch baseball games or football games. Well, you know. But think about, like, I, I do charity work too. You know, go out and people that are less fortunate than us and, and go out and, and subscribe and to the various charities. And I never thought of that. But some people have done that in their work. So, you know. What, but you also what, have to find. Some people say exactly what you said. What did you said, always I'm want done, to do? I want to go fishing. I don't have to work anymore. Right. And a month into that, they say, Jesus, I'm bored. Yeah, right. That or I don't know what to do with myself. Right. Or, so they have to find another reason right. there to are keep pe- themselves. There are people out there that give courses in retirement. Okay. You know, have, a, have a game plan, like pre-retirement, you know, before you, before you stop working. And then, you know, what you're going to do after, let's say, the first year. And then what's your long-term game plan? Yeah. But, but you're saying that retirement can be a career. It should be. And it should be. It should be a career. Maybe these days it must be. Well, yeah, it must be. You know, I don't know about that. That's, we're not a dictatorship yet. But well, give it another couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. Somebody may be listening. Oh, that's anyway, right. Don't, no names, please. Somebody is listening. Mm-hmm. Who cares? But you, you never know. Uh, or you've all, maybe somebody who always uh, like like to do with uh, making clothes. You know, and that can become a full-time thing. Don't say it. Don't you really have to be a little bit like Louis, like Uncle Louis? You're an optimist. Yeah. Oh, well, you got to be an optimist. Yeah. Otherwise, you're in trouble. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or you know, you know, there are a lot of jobs in showbiz that are not just acting. There's techies. You know, people that got to put it together. There's road You know, there's directing. There's producing. What what you see up there. Is, is just the byproduct of what, what happened way back then. Or a writer. Some people may be good writers and they never tried it. You know, because I was scared to be a writer. It was too risky. Well, that's so I exactly in the mill. for me. It's all I know how to do, so I figure I'm never going to retire. Yeah, well, you're retired now and you may not even know it. Oh, I've been retired for a long time <laughs> in some ways. <laughs> okay. A tease. But, He's cut. Okay, so that, that's kind of where it's at. But I think th- thinking things out and talking to other people, don't be shy about that. Tell, tell your people, hey, I always, I always wanted to be uh, in, the, in the restaurant business. So try it. You may, you, you may find you didn't like it at all. Thank God you were not in it. But, but you know, that you have to experiment. Should you stay with something familiar or something new? Because well, retirement is something new, and, whether you know it or not. Right, of course. And there's a monetary thing. Did, did you save your money? Oh, or did you put so much away in the market? Or did you put so much away in it? savings accounts or things like that. I think a lot of people are having that problem. Well, they didn't do it. They didn't think about it. Materialized. And some, some companies may not have a pension. And uh, it, it, this, this is happening. Your situation will dictate how you approach it, I think. Right. Exactly, exactly. But I think you have to have what you have, which is a real, I want to learn new things and curiosity. And I learn optimism. something new every day. And and I'm only 21. So, you know. <laughs> You're younger than I am. Well, I, dye my, okay, I dye my hair. Shoot. That's, that's another thing. I, I, have, I, go okay. to, I go to Elizabeth Garden <laughs> every two months and get my hair dyed. Now that to me is a good attitude. And that, on that because note, it makes me, I don't look my age. I don't look my age. I don't act my age. I don't feel my age. And that's what you got to tell people. That's better than not feeling your feet. Yeah, right? there you go. 